Hey, how are you? Chad McMillan here, uh, McMillan Strategies. Uh, I've got a great uh, topic um, I'm inspired to uh, share with you today. Uh, as some of you know, I like to chat about those things that inspire me in the moment, uh, no matter what I'm doing, and when I feel uh, when I feel compelled uh, and clear on a topic uh, that is uh, that is channeling through me, uh, I am happy to uh, share it, sit down in front of this camera and get to it. So today, uh, super cool and I think uh, very important and could really change the way you look at a lot of things uh, in your world uh, as, it, as it does mine and, uh, and carries a lot of good energy with it, is uh, my lottery ticket uh, formula. It sounds a little um, inflammatory, maybe. It sounds a little bit, you know, hype-minded or whatever. Um, but let's look at it like this. Uh, you're working nine to five, you've got a wage job, uh, whatever your service is that you're providing, and you're grinding it out. And let's be honest, this is a huge percentage of the global population that is grinding it out. Um, as we know, uh, or many know, uh, the balancing uh, uh, matrix of uh, global wealth. So there are uh, many who have, and many who at least financially, uh, money-minded uh, wise, uh, do not or have less. And everything I'm about is about uh, living free, is about experiencing your own personal freedom, a sustainable lifestyle and state of being, uh, a contribution to uh, uh, the world and the universe and uh, reaping uh, the joys and the benefits of abundance which include uh, cash in your pocket and cash in the bank. So uh, the lottery ticket formula. Now lottery ticket itself uh, obviously uh, has these odds attached to it that are you know one in how many millions that you're actually going to win the lottery or in the US, you know, the Powerball lotteries that get so much attention because suddenly some person wins, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars. Uh, look, those people are real. Uh, it does happen. Um, they do award prizes. Uh, but these, uh, these stats are pretty far out. So um, uh, a topic for a different day, but the uh, reality is that that concept of, uh, of a big win um, out of the blue um, is uh, is game changing is something that could totally change your life uh, from whatever circumstance you're in uh, in the moment and that is irrespective of whether you are stressed out or financially tight or strapped uh, you are uh, feeling boxed in uh, you're feeling drained or tired from the work you're doing uh, with no end in sight because let's be honest okay uh, depending on the work that you're doing and depending on the structure of your employment engagement or your contractual engagement with the group or with people uh, or with a company, um, you could very well have yourself structured in a way that will only allow you limited growth uh, in your personal uh, financial prosperity uh, for continuing to exchange your time for work. So uh, what are you going to do about that? How are you going to uh, structure your existence um, or your company's existence, depending on what you're providing as a service or product to your company, so that um, that isn't the case, that you aren't fully, totally tied into this um, rigid, uh, predictable um, model of, um, of earning. And you look, there's risks associated with that as well. There's all kinds of things that change business within business. So depending on what you're in, your sector can go through a lot of challenges. Uh, there could be downsizing in the company you work with or the, uh, or the client base that you're working with in a sector. I've been through ups and downs and, and sideways, uh, uh, you know, uh, markets uh, in, in a variety of areas. So, you know, it, it, uh, it happens. Um, what are you going to do about that when that occurs? So, uh, and look, it doesn't mean that it will occur, it just means that it could and you're still exposed to that. So even if you think you're operating very stably, you got your nine to five covered and all this income is predictable, that's great. But what are your dreams, 
right? What do you really, really want to do with your life? And many people I, uh, you know, speak with and, and connect with and, uh, and share with um, are always speaking about what they want and not what they have. Um, many people see that next step over the hurdle is the stage uh, or as the stage uh, that at that point they will be happy or satisfied with their lives as opposed to being that here uh, in this moment. So that means they have dreams for a bigger house, a bigger property, a boat, you know, some travel, uh, growing their family, some nicer clothes, so on and so forth. And not all our wants are material, of course, but let's be honest, in Western society, this is, uh, Western society especially, this is a core component of this of this dream is the ability to experience uh, monetary abundance and the material uh, um, realization of that through activity or products or, or services a day at the spa or whatever you're into right so uh, nine to five you can do it you can grind it out it depends what you're good at and it depends what you're worth and you know, I'm sure people that are watching this are exceptionally talented in all kinds of different ways uh, and potentially some really niche ways that allow you to be paid very handsomely for uh, the services you provide. Um, that said, uh, my success in my life has come through uh, lottery ticket minded positioning and this is where the strategy comes in. Uh, I suggest as it relates to me uh, and I offer uh, as possible insight for you uh, and others in your world that a lottery ticket minded formula is a uh, an attractive uh, strategy um, uh, to consider um, in the way you approach your life uh, why um, if we position, let me say this, let me, let me cover this. Uh, have you ever heard of uh, you can't win if you don't play? Have you ever heard that adage? It's one of my favorites. It means if you don't own the lottery ticket, you can't win the lottery. Uh, pretty self-evident, uh, but so important. So you have these dreams, you're working your nine to five job, it's directly tied to the time you put in. You wake up every day, you brush your teeth, you put your clothes on, you go to work, you punch in. You punch out, at the end of the day you're tired, cook up some dinner for the family, everybody sits around and either you're thrilled about that rhythm or you're thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we took the whole family to the Bahamas or if we got on a boat and went on a world cruise or so on and so forth. So the question you have for yourself is how have you positioned yourself or are you positioned in any way that uh, if something were to occur favorable uh, to that fashion that you've positioned yourself uh, that you will be able to reap the bonus rewards of that success uh, in a way that isn't tied only to the activity you're doing. Um, there's, there's another adage that I really like or there's another uh, uh, joke I really like. So I'll share this one as well. Man goes to a, a, a very poor man and he's, he's having a tough time and he goes to a to a uh, statue of a saint, of a, of a saint. and uh, uh, this is non-religiously biased, I'm just saying there's a saint, he, it's his faith, and he goes out of desperation to plead to the saint and say, please, 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 saint, uh, I'm begging you, please, please, uh, I would love to win the lottery, please, uh, can you just, can you let me win the lottery? Can you send me millions of dollars? That would be amazing. Uh, thank you very much love you and, and on his way he goes. A few weeks pass and uh, and the man comes back and he's equally desperate and he comes up to the saint and he goes, please, please, please saint, like I beg of you, please. I was here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really, really wanting and needing to win the lottery. I'm having a tough go at it. Please, please, please saint, I need your, I need your help. Uh, may I please, please, please win the lottery. Thank you very much, thank you so much. And he, and he carries on his way. And a couple weeks after that, the man comes back and now he's really desperate because he still hasn't won the lottery. And he uh, is having a hard time, no doubt, and he's a good good person and he's doing his best. 
but he hasn't won the lottery. And he comes up, walks up to the saint, and he says, he says, uh, please, please, I mean, please, saint, look, this is the third time I'm here. I, I love you, and I beg you, I am doing the work as best I know how. I'm a good man, I'm noble, I, I help out, I do everything I can. Please, saint, can I please, please, please win the lottery? And this time the statue takes a little look and he, the statue moves and takes a little look and looks down at the man who's, who's sobbing at his, at his feet and he says, I hear you, my son, I hear you. Would you please, please, please buy a ticket? I hope you caught that one. So the man is begging, of course, for the opportunity to win the lottery, but he doesn't have the lottery ticket so that the saint can actually make the lottery <laughs> provide him the winning numbers. So if you can't win, or sorry, you can't win if you don't play. So you need a lottery ticket. The reality is there's state-run lotteries which are like, hey, lottery ticket, and you could win the Powerball for $250 million. Look, at that's one way, but the odds are, you know, are pretty heavily stacked. Uh, so that's not what I'm suggesting, and really that's not what I do. I mean, let's be honest, on occasion I've bought a lottery ticket just for fun, because uh, why not? But, uh, but the reality is that, that I'm talking about st strategies that are much more sophisticated, where you can control uh, more of the cards as it relates to your potential uh, ability to win a lottery um, in a number of different areas or methods that you have created. So, uh, what types of lottery tickets am I talking about? Well, this is in relation to what you, your skills, your strengths, and your abilities are. Um, the kinds of lottery tickets, um, ideas, or patents, right? Uh, if you have an amazing idea that you can craft together, what would a lottery ticket look like? Well, it might be a joint venture partner. It might be financing that company in a way that allows you to hold a, a significant uh, equity position, which means ownership position for those that don't understand the term, uh, that would allow you to uh, build that company up into something that's worth so much more. Uh, so uh, ideas do become that. Patents are, are the process of securing the exclusive rights to a to a you know, a, a technology, a combination of, of methods that do something unique uh, or similar, um, which are equally just, you know, by and large ideas or prototypes. So they're just, you know, a step ahead of, of ideas. So um, a patent is another lottery ticket. What happens if you commercialize your patent with a partner or you commercialize it yourself? What happens if uh, somebody buys your patent? Um, so you're working, let's look at the analogy. You have an idea in the back of your mind. Uh, you're working your nine to five job. Your idea has nothing to do with the company you're working with. They have no right to the, to the idea or concept. And uh, you're working away, but you have this idea. So when you go home at night, when you have a quiet few minutes, you just flesh out this idea. You get a notepad and you just go to town on it. And you put this whole thing together, this concept, your plan, your, your, um, uh, your prototype, maybe you build it, what have you. And this is your side project because you're working nine to five, you're making the wage you're making, predictable income, so you've got some stability, but then what is this, right? So once you're ready, you show it to a couple people and a couple people go, holy smokes, this is amazing, this is game changing, like, wow, we, we gotta do something with this. You've ultimately connected with a couple people that know how to help you advance that. Maybe I'm one of them and uh, and then, you know, partners come in. They're either interested in uh, joint venturing, which is a partnering term for your, for your idea, or, they, um, or they're interested in financing your company to get it going. So you can take the next steps on the path of, you know, of commercially deploying uh, whatever it is that you've created uh, in a way that the rest of the world can, can use it. Uh, which, of course, you know, depending on the size or the scale or whatever it is you've built, can require capital to, you know, bring the people in and the team and, and uh, what have you, the distribution, to be able to share this. Um, and it's purely just a function of numbers to determine what those numbers look like. So uh, if the idea is great and people love it, that can happen. Now what if you had that? So you're working nine to five, what if you 
had that in your back pocket, okay? And you're building, you're building this thing. What, what do you think that would do for your energy? Well, your energy is going to be up. You're going to feel inspired. You're going to feel creatively enthused. Uh, you're going to have hope in your life, which is, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with hope. Uh, it's always cast as this like altruistic, idealistic state of being that isn't based in reality. Be hopeful. Uh, I believe that this can occur. Uh, it's so critical. I would suggest to you, as a creative and entrepreneur, and as a, just a just a, a citizen of this of this you know, planet we're on, it keeps me going having these types of things in my pocket. I know that you know what any of these things that I'm doing can work on a level that goes like this, and it changes everything. And I know it because I've done it and I've lived it, and that change is like mind blowing. Uh, so it's spectacular. So how does that change your sense of worth, contribution, uh, significance, uh, general being, your enthusiasm around others and whatever, uh, that, uh, uh, that that uh, activity can bring um, uh, to your world and your life? And then it works. What if it works, right? What is that? I mean, this is, this is, the, this is the stuff. Some of the greatest things in the world now that are totally mainstream uh, have been built in in garages and apartments. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Jobs and, and Apple and the first Mac was some form of uh, you know garage-minded uh, startup project. Uh, you know, Windows and, and Microsoft certainly were um, prior to anyone knowing what a computer was. Uh, Facebook, which has over 1.5 billion users I believe at this point uh, that was Zuckerberg in his dorm room right um, just going boom epiphany right I have an idea and there's Zuckerberg and he's like I'm going to school it's another you know maybe nine to five form right I'm learning I'm at school that's great I'm reading my textbooks there's got to be something more to life I feel like I can do more than this you know he's scanning papers but he's like nah hey I got a fun idea and it's, you know, remember something, everything's a social experiment. So he has an idea and he's like, let's, let's kick the can at this, let's give it a go. Brightens him up, feels good about life, he's like, you know, this is pretty cool and I mean, look, uh, go watch The Social Network if you'd like a little, you know, piece on that whole, that whole journey. Uh, you know, it's incredible, the rest is history, right? And what's Zuckerberg now? I mean, he's a multi-billionaire. So, how do you change your life? You need a lottery ticket. So ideas and patents. Uh, products. You can build a product. It's an extension of ideas and patents, but there's all kinds of different products, right? Um, we're looking at, um, uh, you know, informational, like knowledge-based uh, products. We're looking at hardware products, like technology or, or toys or who knows what, right? Um, I would say that lottery ticket type stuff tends to be more um, product-minded than it is service-minded. Um, it just seems to me, as I sense it right now, more important for me to, uh, to describe that to you without necessarily uh, elaborating on how or why uh, too, too much, other than um, products tend to be something that many people can rally around, where a service is more something that I have to do physically with my time, uh, unless, of course, you turn that service into a product, an information knowledge-based product, or a book or something like that, which is then a little bit different. So, uh, products or lottery tickets, uh, you know, caveat before I say this, and know some people go, oh yeah, but look, I'm involved in uh, small cap and startup public markets. I'm, I'm familiar with them intricately. I've been involved with them for over a dozen years and I'm second generation in it. So when I was a kid, I would be riding with my father in the car to the soccer game and we'd be chatting about business and deals and the potential for, you know, multi-million and multi-billion dollar transactions to be crystallized. That was when I was a kid, right? And I will always remember and always appreciate that uh, creative inspiration in him, and I still do, uh, that his energy, his whole field is just lit up because, well, you, you, you know, you're working on some things and you're grinding it out if you need to, and there's, you know, you're making things work as best you know how the light and the twinkle in your eyes when you have a lottery ticket project in your in your world um, exposure in a lottery ticket will give you lift it gives you wings it, it just takes you to a different level and I will always remember my father having that energy when he was sharing these stories with me when I was a kid so uh, that said 
I will say another type of lottery ticket are stocks. Uh, depending how you want to position your portfolio, you know, you always need to discuss with your own portfolio uh, manager or your, uh, your, your broker, uh, your advisor, um, about what's suitable for you. Uh, I am neither of those or none of those, so I, I won't make any specific recommendations. But the reality is there are strategies widespread, heavily used, where many people uh, evaluate uh, for their own uh, risk tolerance levels, um, opportunities that give them upside to exceptional levels of growth and, and uh, bonus earnings and what have you, with some form of uh, mitigating strategy to avoid as best they can any downside risk. So uh, I'll get back to downside risk in a few minutes, but the, uh, the reality is stocks, um, the potential exists. I once ran a company, we were worth a million dollars, we had a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank, we were totally unloved, uh, we had 10 million shares out, we were trading at 12 cents, and across my desk, through a number of my associates that uh, I was connected to, or a couple anyways, um, it, it came across my desk a lottery ticket style opportunity uh, that was too good to pass up. Um, and when you know what you're looking for, you see it. And I saw it and I was tenacious and I, I was aggressive and, and got in there, made sure we put it into our company. The downside risk was, was negligible, but the upside potential was huge. And there was a near-term catalyst that would very soon uh, show us uh, whether we were right or wrong. And so even if we were wrong, we'd still have the ability to, to go for another round, right? To find something else for the company. Uh, within three weeks, there was an announcement by an adjacent company, Party. Uh, they were right, uh, and we were right, being positioned right there. Uh, the market responded exceptionally well to uh, what they had done, so that means the stock went up, right, uh, a lot. And uh, because we were right there, so did we. So we went from about $0.12 cents a share, roughly, give or take, to uh, $1.50 a share in this, in this company, in this stock. Uh, within six weeks of uh, my signing the, the LOI to uh, uh, acquire this project. Um, ultimately, I was president. Ultimately, you know, the whole uh, you know, transaction and the whole life cycle of that venture uh, you know, played out. Um, but that's an example, right? Because all of my shareholders, there were some 1,200 of them that sat patiently while the company wasn't worth anything and nobody was looking at it or cared about it. Uh, that sat there believing in what we were capable of doing that said to themselves ah this one's a lottery ticket those are good guys I think they know what they're doing I feel that they do I feel they're gonna find something and the value of this company is gonna go up and in the meantime they didn't always I mean some would call once in a while but they didn't call me every day they didn't harass me what are you doing right now what are you doing right now they just want to know that you're continuing to work on it right which is valid and fair and they went about their other business. And then it worked. And those shareholders, many of them, made an absolute ton of money because they own the stock at levels that were in that range. And the stock, you know, went on a huge run, uh, period. I mean, that's, that's uh, let's say, that's, you know, what's the return on that? Just off the top of your head, right? Um, that's like a 1,000% plus return. Uh, if you own the stock at the early levels, um, potentially anyways, and you sold at the top, which you never perfectly call, but, uh, but it existed. So that's a lottery ticket event for those shareholders, and that's what I'm looking at describing. So that occurs in stocks. Uh, how to pinpoint them, that's a story for another day. Um, uh, you know, yeah, I'll just, I'll leave that whole kettle of fish alone other than to say that's possible. So that's a lottery ticket, consider it. Um, property speculation is another, um, I would say, as it relates to resources is one, which is a bit of the story that I'm referring to, um, events that are going to make the value of a property go up considerably. Um, many play in the, in the resource business uh, with that in mind. Early stage or, or you know, undervalued, um, a little more advanced properties that look like they might have a gold mine or a diamond mine or these types of things is another way that people position for lottery ticket uh, gains 
um, but with a real estate component. So there's actually a hard asset to to uh, to hold on to to invest in. Uh, so there's some ideas. I'm sure I've got your mind blowing up, uh, and I hope so. Anyways, as it relates to lottery tickets. So the question is, what lottery tickets do you hold in your pocket right now? No matter what you're doing or where you're doing it, what are those things that in the near term uh, have high potential uh, to uh, to break out, to go up. Um, uh, what can you do to create these for yourself where you own the idea, the patent, uh, you know, the, the materials, the, the book rights, the, the, the song you wrote, whatever it is. There's so many different types of, of lottery tickets. Uh, do you have any? If you don't, now you've got a little bit of a trigger, uh, a little bit of a, of, a, of a tease of inspiration to uh, uh, work your mind around um, what, that, what that is, what that looks like, uh, so you can start that process for yourself. Highly, highly recommended uh, as, a, as a technique to build yourself out of a um, monotonous, draining, you know, borderline enslaved style of life, unless you love that type of thing. I mean... No judgment, you know. Uh, go for it. That's not my world, you know. I, I play for for freedom. I I play for for big wins. I play for game changing uh, wealth and uh, abundance in my world. I don't play it for myself. I play it for everyone I'm connected to or associated with that that believes in what I do and and wants to join me on those journeys, whatever they may be. So. Um, you know, uh, it's super important um, to chat about. Um, what are the characteristics of lottery tickets? Let me just say this. Um, blue sky, right? So there's huge blue sky uh, in an if A then B. So often you'll have the story that if the, let's use music as an example, if the major record studio picks up my song with a huge you know, distribution agreement attached to it and a, and a promotional budget, then what will occur? There's no guarantees that that will occur, but what are you playing for? If A uh, occurs, then B will occur, uh, is a characteristic of a lottery ticket um, in relation to blue sky, because B stands for blue sky, it, at least in this, this uh, context. It means something really big is gonna happen. If I build this and I can put it here uh, in this store to sell, if um, if I build this and a thousand people actually like it and use it, what does that mean? That's your blue sky. That's the that's the size of the lottery ticket you're playing for. So um, you know, reflect on that. Uh, scalability. So your lottery ticket, you know, should be scalable in that there is some logical reason why uh, the uh, growth of that lottery ticket could be so so big, right? Why is that? Because if we can sell 10,000 of these units, then and this makes sense because we can do it, uh, if 10,000 units of this are sold, it will amount to X millions of dollars, right? Um, you can really build the quantification of these different lottery tickets uh, um, uh, uh, you know, as you evaluate them, uh, both for consideration for yourself or as you build them yourself. Um, so, uh, a couple of key characteristics there. Um, my caveats, right, is I consider them in what I uh, do, build, and work on. Um, I like to avoid and mitigate downside risk. So, wherever possible, you're also considering what's the worst that can happen. Okay, you hear the story of the guy who goes to the casino and then, you know, he brings the keys to his car to the poker table. The next thing you know, he throws his car in and then he loses his car. The next thing you know, he mortgages his house and now he's lost his house. Gambling, right? What's his downside risk he's playing with? Well, if this card doesn't show up, I lose my house. Okay, well, you know, is that a reasonable... Uh, you know, lottery ticket bet, so to speak, to make, I would suggest to you it isn't. Uh, that is not a bet I would look to make. Um, but what if um, you put 
X number of dollars into something and the downside risk is that you could lose all that money uh, but you're comfortable right losing all of that money which is a good place to start but the upside is that if you're right that this could be what ten times your money that you earn or a thousand times or you put that money into a product you're building which could change your entire life uh, I could go on right and I'm doing this really to be clear this is not a non you know financial advisory basis uh, these are strategies that I use and this is a key strategy that I'd suggest to you has the potential to dramatically change your life because I see it happening all the time and I've and I've been on this journey and am on it still so uh, I'm always positioning myself for uh, lottery ticket strategies now not solely but they're included in my uh, in my approach to life in the universe no question about it um, so downside risk is about logically you know common sense uh, you know minded consideration uh, to be included here for you to consider whether uh, you know your downside risk is going to devastate you or, or destroy you or it's something you can manage at worst case if the thing totally doesn't work but where at best if it does everything's lined up to uh, to absolutely go gangbusters to, to, to rock and roll so uh, downside risk um, another uh, key thing is um, to keep inventory I'd suggest of your lottery ticket portfolio so to speak um, we hear of stock portfolios right uh, whether you're an experienced trader or not many people um, have portfolios of stock it's essentially the same idea except this is like a notepad of going ah I own that song, right? It's a, it's an asset list, but an asset of what can sometimes be intangibles that are tough to measure their monetary value. I own that song. I have those rights to this. I have this patent to that. Um, you know what else? Um, I've started this company over here. I'm, I'm partners on this. Whatever. This type of stuff. Keep keep that somewhere uh, on a notepad, digital or otherwise. In your, in your general, you know, financial ledgers, whatever you're, um, whatever you're, you're using, um, to refer to, to remind yourself, even on those really crummy days where you're like, man, this sucks, I'm still in this nine to five job, none of this is, is rolling, you know, my manager, whoever I'm working with just gave me a bunch of whatever, you know, today, or piled a bunch of new paperwork on my desk, what am I doing, right? In those days, pull out your lottery ticket list, you know, and say, ah, those are the lottery tickets. These are the, these are the irons I have in the fire, so to speak, uh, that made, you know, turn from coal to diamonds, or that I could turn into uh, diamonds from coal. Um, and review it and, and, and see where you're missing some exposure, some opportunity uh, to expose yourself to that type of, of upside potential. Uh, it's just awesome, right? Because uh, when it works, man, it works. And it can brighten up your life. It, it's tons of fun. Huge smile on your face. You feel like, you know, the smartest person in the room. Uh, Non-ego, you know, fueled. But it's hard not to uh, feel good about yourself when you position yourself that way. And then it works. And you're right. Um, really great. So uh, those two, you know, uh, considerations to make in your... Uh, in your lottery ticket formula, you know, uh, basket. Um, and then I guess an advanced consideration uh, that's coming up for me to, to share. Um, the best of the best at this, uh, I would suggest you have found uh, business models to build um, around lottery ticket minded systems. Okay, so they've got their basic, you know, covered. Um, everything you know is stable makes sense but they're consistently and constantly exposed to this you know perpetual um, movement of opportunity that can um, uh, have these you know major blue sky realization you know moments uh, where the value of one of the tickets that they're holding just goes through the roof so position yourself in that in that realm 
is is an advanced lottery ticket strategy. Many use it, and uh, and and it works for them. There's no there's no question about it. It's uh, it's an interesting uh, you know long term uh, you know high net worth minded wealth building approach. So um, important to reference there. Um, all this said, you know I'm I'm using lottery ticket in a really aloof way. Um, it really has this negative context analogy, uh, you know, associated with it about this, you know, the odds are stacked against you. None of this is ever going to work, and these are all hope-based. Uh, these are all hope-based uh, tickets you're holding. Uh, nothing can be farther from the truth as it relates to the way I'm describing this today. Uh, it is possible. It's been done many times. I've done it. Uh, so many people I know have done it. Uh, you can do it. Um, reflect on it, you know, feel into it on areas where you feel that you can build, you know, assets from, from scratch, ideas, uh, file patents, what have you, um, develop new products, um, where you have an ownership basket of things that you can leverage uh, into new opportunities um, to help you work you out of this kind of nine to five, you know, grind-minded, uh, heavily draining, you know, style of living, uh, because we're blessed uh, in what we can do, in, in at least the world that I am in. Um, we have always ample opportunity in front of us, no matter what our circumstances are, to change our lives and uh, get something going uh, with that type of potential attached to it. So don't count yourself short. Uh, believe in yourself that you can do it. If everyone around you says, I don't like your idea or you're off your rocker, um, especially the latter. If most people think you're crazy, you might be right in the strike zone there. You might be right in the spot. Uh, to be honest, it's good to listen to your mirrors, but at the same time, um, you need to be you know, a little bit crazy to try some of the things that are going to change the world. Because uh, maybe a last little bonus you know, thought here, if you want a lottery ticket that's got a real possibility to do some major major things some way or other you're going to change something that already exists you're going to improve upon it you're going to change it or adjust it you're going to uh, you're going to add to it there's some you know change in the status quo of the balance of whatever it is that you're that you're building you're adding another song uh, you know to the world's you know, to the world's instrument, right? The global, you know, instrument and library of music. Or you're coming up with a new way to process music or to uh, produce music or whatever. Some way or other, um, you know, your lottery tickets will be doing things that nobody has done before. So uh, fear not uh, criticism early. I've seen that always and uh, often change to infinite praise as soon as it clicks and you're right and everybody thinks you, you know, you, you hit a home run and, and, uh, and, and, you know, appreciation for your success or your presence or what have you can change quite dramatically. And that said, it can happen very quickly. So, uh, so hey, believe in yourself. I believe in you. I believe in myself. I believe in you. No doubt about it. And uh, if you think there's any way I can help you along your journey, just uh, connect with me and let me know. Uh, there's all kinds of ways we can uh, we can explore doing things together um, but until then I hope you found this of interest and uh, of value uh, I wish you the best and uh, we'll talk to you soon all right thanks